What up, nomads? In this video, I'm sharing my best tips for packing for the rain, from light drizzle to torrential downpours. Let's go. I think there are a few different scenarios where one would need to pack for the rain. The first one is that you're visiting a place with really unpredictable weather, where it can feel like four different seasons in one day. That could be a place known for its freak rainstorms followed by beautiful sun, or just the nature of traveling during a transitional or transseasonal time. Or it's possible your beautiful holiday vacation that you've planned for months is all of a sudden showing rain in the forecast, but you're determined to make the most of it, which includes preparing and packing. Or maybe the place you're traveling to is known for its rain, like London, Seattle, or Vancouver, but it's a destination you're absolutely determined to visit, and the rain is just part of the experience. The last scenario is that you're going for business and you don't actually really care about the weather, but dressing for the weather and dressing appropriately seems like a reasonable call. If you've been following me for a while, you know that when packing, I always consider four factors. Weather, activities, vibe, so casual or dressy, and length of trip. I start with weather because that has the biggest impact, but activities is also important because it determines your exposure to that weather, and that can really alter the way that you pack. If you're taking a cab from the airport to the hotel and you're gonna be spending the entire trip in a conference center, then there's no point in packing waterproof trousers. But if you're going hiking on a dormant volcano in a rainstorm, then maybe you'll want to. So my first piece of advice when packing for the rain is to determine just how rainy it's going to be and how much time you're likely to spend in the rain. And also how polished you need to look. Now the last category of how long you're traveling will simply help determine how many changes of clothes you'll need to pack. But the major categories of footwear and outerwear are the ones that are the most important. So footwear. If you're expecting a freak rainstorm only, you might get away with wearing any footwear really because you can duck into a covering or a cafe during the storm and just wait it out. Now I wouldn't risk it with sandals or canvas shoes or suede if you have items that you love, but whatever sneaker or booty you're wearing will probably be fine. For business trips, for example, my preferred styles are a closed toed brogue booty, or like a substantial leather sneaker. Even in medium rain, these will do just fine. I would just recommend wiping off your shoes when you come back inside. For men, rubber shoe covers can be a great business choice because you slide them over your dress shoes. For casual wear, sillies are a pretty cute, lightweight, easy to pack shoe cover for any occasion. They're like instant rain boots. If you're looking for a more athletic style, Vessi sneakers and Allbirds Mizzles are great options for water repellent shoes that won't trap your feet in thick rubber like rain boots would. Because to be honest, here's the thing about dressing for the rain. It can get sweaty. Between the rubber boots and the plastic raincoats, there's little breathability. If you wanna wear your rain kit all day, there may be some compromises that you wanna make on fabrics to make sure you're not just as damp on the inside as you are on the outside. So water repellent shoes can be a great option, just like leather treated with a rain repellent product as an alternative to actual rain boots and ones that you'll feel comfortable wearing all day. My last great rain ready footwear purchase was these Converse sneakers that have an inner layer of Gore-Tex. Now Gore-Tex is a fabric that at a microscopic level has a weave that is tight enough to keep out water beads, but loose enough to let sweat exit. Now, if you're committed to a proper rain boot, there are some really cute styles from high heeled boots to hiking styles to low ones. And there are even some tall ones that are designed to be rollable and foldable, which is genius for packing into a suitcase. On the other extreme end, if it's summertime and you're on vacation, maybe plastic sandals are actually the best thing to wear in the rain. I've been on the beach when it rained and honestly, I just rinsed off my sandals and let them dry and when the rain had passed, put my sandals back on and that was the easiest option. 
One note on socks in rainy weather. As always, I recommend merino wool socks because wool dries faster, it retains its thermal properties even when wet, and they are antimicrobial. If your cotton socks get wet, they lose all their warmth and take forever to dry. I'll say it once and I've warned you. Always bring extra socks too, because even mid-hike, swapping out a pair of sweaty or damp socks can make all the difference. Let's move on to outerwear. If you're not sure if it's going to rain 100% or you think the rain shower will only last a few minutes, packing a travel umbrella and simply seeking shelter will likely be fine. This also saves you from having to pack a full-on raincoat. Alternatively, you can also just choose to purchase a raincoat or an umbrella at your destination if the weather forecast does take a turn and you have to adapt. Always remember, most packing mistakes can be remedied on location, especially if you're visiting a city. Other options for light rain are packable rain ponchos and the classic K-Way packable raincoat. My favorite style of raincoat is the kind that has a deep hood come down to just above the knee so that when I sit down on a damp surface, it's not a big deal. And nothing with too many bells and whistles, but a hood is really a must for me. I don't always love holding up an umbrella and when it's windy, I almost prefer not to have one and to just count on the hood of my raincoat. Other styles are longer trenches or rubberized long coats, and there's so many cute styles now. If it's a light drizzle, you can get away with a matte coat or some sort of water repellent cotton, which means it's been treated to not soak in moisture. Sidebar, are you always wondering what the difference is between water resistant, water repellent, and waterproof? Water resistant garments offer the lowest level of water protection. If a garment resists water, it is usually just because of the fabric itself and is acting as a barrier between you and light rain. Tightly woven fabrics offer a degree of water resistance by nature because it takes some time for the water to seep through the material. With the addition of coating or impregnation, however, you can make that kind of fabric water repellent. Water repellency is a step up from water resistance, which means water cannot easily penetrate the material. Instead, water beads on the outside. The technical term for this is hydrophobic. This is usually achieved with wax coatings and other additional treatments that add a barrier on the fabric. You can even buy products to re-add repellent properties to your coats in the form of sprays, lotions, and in-washing machine product. Waterproof means the fabric is designed from the start to absolutely be impenetrable. But who here has worn a jacket that they thought was waterproof only to feel wet when caught in a torrential downpour? Me. <laughs> That's because different waterproof fabrics have different thresholds of just how much added water pressure of an intense shower, for example, will make water seep through the fabric and onto your skin. You can easily find this information by checking a jacket's water column. So a jacket with a water column of 10,000 millimeters means you would only start getting wet if a single point of the jacket was hit with a 10 meter column of water. So if you are in fact planning to go hiking in a downpour, what's the best coat? I went looking on some backpacking forums to find the best answer, and it seems most people recommend a coat that has a hood, surprise, sufficient length to make sure your water isn't dripping down your butt and can be tightened around the wrists and around the face. They also recommend a water column of 20,000 millimeters or more, and then to layer that over a more breathable but still repellent inner layer. If it's cold, add a down layer underneath like a down vest or a jacket or a fleece if it's not too cold. And for your base layer, you guessed it, merino wool. Shirts and trousers. So something I've started doing more and more is wearing certain more optimal trousers on rainy days, especially when it's windy and rainy, which means like the rain is coming at you from all sides. Tight denim is kind of my worst nightmare when it's really pouring because pulling off wet, tight cotton jeans just is a horrible experience. Instead, I wear wool blend trousers on rainy days because they dry uber quick and better yet, opt for a technical fabric like Lululemon pants or Kitten Ace pants. 
If you're confused about what makes pants technical, it's typically water resistant fabrics and smart details like snaps or extra pockets and thoughtful extras that make it good for golfing, hiking, or biking. But some workout pants can also be great options. My Lululemon joggers, for example, which I'll link below, are kind of the ultimate travel pant for that reason. Now there's a whole category of actual rain pants, and these are recommended to people who are going hiking in damp, rainy conditions. And these can be great to make you feel invincible against the elements, or if you are hiking in really high brush. Pair them with a raincoat and gaiters, and you have basically built your own hazmat suit. In terms of tops, I don't really do anything special, but I do love a good cozy knit on a rainy day. And if it's really hot and rainy, something breathable like hemp or linen is the best because those fabrics will dry really quickly. Now accessories. Choosing a good packable umbrella is key here. I would recommend reading reviews because all the good information is in those real tried and tested internet reviews. If you're out and about, bring an extra bag to store your wet umbrella if you're going into a shop or into a restaurant. If you're hiking, a hat can replace an umbrella, so you can be totally hands-free. But I personally prefer the coziness of a thin wool toque instead. As far as bags go, most hiking or more technical backpacks come with their own rain cover, so your bag doesn't run the risk of getting soaked through and the contents being damaged. You can also buy a universal bag cover that goes over most backpacks. Alternatively, you can buy a water repellent bag like a waxed canvas or a waterproof bag like the Rains bags. For purses, I would recommend picking a nylon bag like my Longchamp Le Pliage bag, which has been with me absolutely everywhere. And I find them just less delicate than those leather, suede, or cotton purses. You can also get a bag that has an exterior pocket that's perfect for an umbrella, but ultimately putting your umbrella back in its sleeve or in its own bag, even just a plastic grocery bag, is usually fine when putting it back in your purse. Just remember that when you get home or to your hotel or Airbnb, to hang everything up, wipe off your leather shoes and bags if that's what you were wearing, and open up your umbrella to dry, or else the water can rust the inside hinges of your umbrella. Did I miss any other tips? Leave your best tips for packing for the rain below. Happy travels and see you in the next video. What up nomads?